Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is NAB Show Live. Hey guys, my name is Addison Ricky, and this is Intro to Video Production from Broadcast Beat. Camera lenses in their various settings can be pretty confusing and intimidating, sort of like my ex-girlfriend. But once you understand how to use them, you can have much more control over how your image looks and ultimately take better pictures and video. Lenses are on every camera, and they give the camera three basic abilities. Zoom in and out, focus, and let more or less light into the camera. Some lenses are fixed permanently to the camera, which is the case with many ENG-style cameras, home video cameras, and phone cameras. But some cameras allow you to remove and change lenses to get different looks and styles. DSLRs and many professional-level video cameras and film cameras have these interchangeable lens systems. However, not all lenses fit all cameras, just like not all pipe clamps fit all truss systems. There are many different types of lens mounts, and understanding which lenses fit your camera is crucial. So make sure you know which one to get before you buy. Generally, each company has its own proprietary lens mount, but some companies, especially newer companies, borrow from others. When most people think of lenses, the first thing that comes to mind is zoom, like lenses that can zoom in and out. This is what we call a variable lens, because they're lenses that can vary or change their focal length. Focal length is a measurement of how zoomed in or out a lens is. 50 millimeters is pretty much the standard. That's about what the human eye sees. Anything above 50 millimeter we call tight or zoomed in. Anything below 50 millimeter we call wide or zoomed out. Different focal lengths are used for different situations. For example, a tight lens might be used to stalk your ex-girlfriend while she works out at the gym. A wide lens could be used to photograph your new bedroom set that you just set up in your parents' basement. Not all lenses are variable lenses though. Some lenses are prime, meaning they have set focal lengths. So a 35 millimeter prime lens is a wide angle lens that cannot be zoomed in or out. The advantage of a prime lens is that they generally look better than a variable lens at the same focal length. They distort the image less because they're optimized for a specific focal length instead of a range of focal lengths. Prime lenses are also usually faster than their variable counterparts. By faster, I mean they have a larger maximum aperture. Inside every lens, there are small blades that open and close to allow more or less light in. The size of the opening is the aperture. The larger the maximum aperture of a lens, the faster it is. Aperture is measured in f-stops, or t-stops on some lenses. On the side of a lens, you'll usually see a sequence of numbers that goes something like 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11. It means absolutely nothing. It's just put there to make the lens look more technical than it really is. What? Oh, turns out these are actually f-stops. Who knew? But opposite of what you would expect, the smaller number actually means a larger opening. So when you see a 24mm f2 lens, that means that the lens has a focal length of 24mm. This would be a prime wide-angle lens. And its maximum aperture is an f2, which is pretty fast. Here's where it gets even more complicated, though. An 18 to 200mm 3.5 to 5.6 lens would be a variable lens that can be as wide as an 18mm and tight as a 200mm, and anywhere in between. The reason we have two aperture numbers is because at its widest length of 18 millimeters, the lens will be a 3.5. But due to the way the elements in the lens work, as you zoom in, the maximum aperture actually decreases to a 5.6. Remember, larger number means smaller opening. Another point to note is that as your aperture increases, your depth of field decreases. When you focus on a subject, part of the scene in front of and behind your subject will also be an acceptable focus. The distance from the front to the back of this area is your depth of field. This distance can be very large, covering almost in your entire scene, but this distance can also be extremely small, covering only a few inches or less. A larger aperture, or smaller aperture number, will always give you a smaller area that is an acceptable focus. This isn't necessarily bad or good, it really comes down to each situation and artistic choice. In a football game where you want to see as much of the action as possible, the depth of field should be very large. But in an emotional scene in a romance film, you might want to shrink down the depth of field to help your audience better connect with your characters. I love you! I need to spend more time working on my deltoids. No! Regardless of your depth of field, it's always important to make sure you have sharp focus on your subject. As a beginner, there's no shame in using autofocus, but as you progress, it's good to practice using manual focus as often as you can. As with any production gear, make sure you do your research before deciding which lens is right for you and which one fits your needs and budget. I hope this video has been a great starting point for you. 
and now you have a basic understanding of lenses. If I haven't scared you off, I hope you have a great day and continue to come back for more intros to video production from Broadcast Beat. Thanks.